So I'll be using the same data as in previous video. So sales is our dependent variable and these are these are our independent variables. So to check for linearity, one simple way is to actually plot the dependent variable against other independent variables in a scatter plot. To do that, I can go to graphs and then legacy dialog and then here I can go to scatter plot. I can I can uh, draw a simple scatter plot. So here I will put cells in uh, x-axis. I would not use store size because this is a binary variable. So the plot will not really indicate anything like a linearity if we use a binary variable in the dependent. But I will let's say use the I will use this one price. Okay. And then I'll click OK. So now we get something like this. So now do we see any linearity here? Can we draw a line which will fit the data? I guess we can draw a line like this, which will fit the data to some extent. Okay, straight line like this. Um, yeah, this indicates actually I see that with increasing price, the cells goes down. Okay, so that kind of indicates that there is a really linear relationship. So normally, if we go with single single scatter plot, we have to we have to plot multiple scatter plots for each of the independent variables. But another way we can do is that we can simply go for matrix, something like this here. Let's say scatter plot. If I click on matrix scatter, if I click define, I will just clean my window here clear the screen and then I put all these variables okay I click the first one and then press shift and then the last one all of them are selected I put them in the matrix variable okay and I click OK so I will have a matrix scatter plot for all of them as you can see here so that this diagonally will be empty because it is the same variable okay but now here let's say let's see here here, what what do we have here? This is the this is the scatter plot with weekly cells and store size. Okay, if you remember, as I told you, with binary, you will not really see anything like linearity because binary works in different ways, right? But then for price of product, we have a kind of decreasing, right? Downward linear curve. We can have here. We can have a upward linear curve. Okay, so we see actually there are some kind of linearity in most of the data, right here. But the, it, this this one is confusing with competitor one price and index of promotional activities. This one is confusing, but actually we can kind of draw some line here. So if I just double click here, this window will pop up, and then here you see this win this option here. If I click here, add fit line a total. So if I click this, you will see the linear curves are added here. So we see that for most of the data, actually, there is some kind of linear ready, okay? So our first assumption is met here. So next assumption is that if the expected mean error of the regression model is zero. To check for this, actually, we have to estimate the regression model. But when we are estimating the regression model, actually, we can kind of kill four birds in one, four birds in one shot, like we can test for this, we can check for when checking for these, we can also go for these ones, okay? So let me show you how we do all four of them at once. So now here I am, I'm going to estimate my regression model. I go to analyze regression linear. So I have the cells and then I select all this variable, click the first one, then press shift and the last one, all of them are selected and I'm here. So now the second one was residuals. We will see it later, but to do that, we have to save the residuals. Okay, so we need to save the residuals and we need to save the predicted values. And that's when actually we can see that the mean is zero. Okay, mean error is zero. And let's continue. And also, just to inform you now, these two saved values will be used for homo scatasticity test as well. We will do Bruch Pagan test using these two values, okay? So I will get back to that later. Third one was homo scatasticity, okay? Which we will do using those, but we can also do something here. We can plot the residuals against the predicted values. So Z resid is the predicted residuals. We plot them in the Y axis and Z pred is the predicted values of the dependent variable 
given the data, we plot them in the x-axis. Okay, so here we will see for the predicted values of x, actually if the error terms are increasing. Okay, that's what we want to see. If they are increasing or decreasing, then we have a heteroscedasis problem. If not, then we don't have a problem. Okay, so from here we can get an idea of homoscedasticity. Meanwhile, we can actually also plot the normality, the for last assumption, the normality of the residuals from here. Okay, so that's what I will check here and I'll go continue. We have saved the values there, okay, which will be used later. Then for the, for the fourth one, the autocorrelation, we will go to statistic and here we have the option of residual and Darwin-Watson test. Okay, so we'll mark this one as well. So actually, this is how we are going to kind of kill four birds in one shot. And we'll click OK. So this is our estimated regression model. The R square is pretty good and all the values are more or less same as what we had before in the previous video, right? So here we can see the normality plot. Here we are seeing a kind of different normality plot. Okay. Here it's the it's called the PP plot. It's uh here the idea is that if this dot falls on the line, then the data is normally distributed. So these are the residuals, they are more or less on the line, okay? So it looks fine, I would say, although they deviate sometimes a little bit from here and there, but I would still say they more or less uh, fits the line, okay? Then this is the scatter plot, which is for, which is to look for the heteroscedasticity issues, right? So here, can we draw a line? If I double click again and I just click here, and then I mentioned that linear, I want a linear line and close. Then I get a line like this. So here we see that actually the values, the observed values, they are getting dispersed with increasing values of the predicted values, right? Like here the errors are quite larger than the errors here, right? So here actually it indicates that we kind of have a heteroscedasticity problem, okay? But now before we test that, Let's go back to our second assumption again here. The expected mean error of the regression model is zero, right? So if we go to our data set now, we see that we have saved the predicted value and the residuals, right? And if we sum these two up, what do we get? If you add these two, you will see that you always get the value of cells, okay? If you add these two, we'll see that you always get the value of cells, okay? So the summation of the predicted and the residual always gives the value of the dependent variable, the observed variable. Now let's say this says the expected mean error is zero, right? So if we copy, if we if we add all these errors up, we should get the value of zero. If I copy them here, control C, and if I just open Excel file and I plot it here in the Excel quickly. So here you will see that their sum is zero. So that's what we see after fitting the regression model, the sum of the errors will be zero, okay? Then the third one is that the variance is constant, homoscedasticity. So we have kind of seen it here that we have to some extent heteroscedasticity problem, right? But this is a graphical representation, okay? But we can do better. We can do a test called brush pagan test. Unfortunately, that cannot be done in SPSS directly, but in other softwares, you can just do it manually. But in SPSS, you can do it using macros, or I have a kind of analog way of doing it. So I will show you actually how can you do that. So to do that, actually, we have already saved these values, the residual values and the predicted values, right? But we will need only the residual values. If you if you remember, the idea of homoscedasticity is that the residual values does not increase with increasing values of independent variables, right? So that means that the independent variables does not affect the residual values, right? So to do that, that's the concept of bruce pagan test. But before we run the test, actually, we have to do one more thing. That is, we have to take the squares of the residual values. So now I will just go to transform quickly and I'll go to compute and I will write S square of residuals. And then I have the residual here multiplied. I will just multiply the residual with itself. So that will create a squared residuals variable here. Okay, so I think I have a new variable here. 
So I will use this variable as the dependent variable and I will regress all the independent variables on it, okay? So I did this mostly to get rid of the negative signs and have a more standardized values, okay? And then I will go to analyze again. I will go to regression. So I will just use the residual square as the dependent variable and I will keep all the independent variables same, okay? So here the idea is that, you know, from the ANOVA, we can see if any of the independent variables has a significant effect on the dependent variable. And in this case, the dependent variable is the square of the residuals. So here, I would like to see that there is no significant effect. That means, that would mean that with increasing values of independent variables, the dependent variable does not change drastically. It remains more or less constant, okay? And for that, actually, I will look for uh, the ANOVA p-value of greater than 0 0.05 okay so this is that this is actually by by doing this we are doing the bruce pagan test and the idea of bruce pagan test is that uh that uh, and and uh, the null hypothesis in the bruce pagan test is that the data are homoscedasticitic okay and the alternative hypothesis is that data is heteroscedasticitic okay so when we will have the p-value higher than 0 0.05 that would mean that we will accept, not accept, we will support the null hypothesis that we will fail to reject the null hypothesis that that data is homoscedasticitic. okay? So that's what we want to see. We want to see the p-value of ANOVA higher than 0 0.05. So I will just click OK. And then I will just go to the ANOVA here. So here I see that the significance value here, okay? Here we can see the square residual is the dependent variable and others are the independent variable. So here I see that actually our, the significance value we got, that is actually less than 0 0.05, okay? So that is actually less than 0 0.05. So it's a, it's, it means that we have, we, we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that data is heteroscedasticitic. Okay, so we have a heteroscedasticity problem. And for the Darwin-Watson, actually we had this value in our regression. So for the Darwin-Watson, actually we have the value in, in our estimated regression model here, you can see it, right? Here. So yeah, the value is actually close to two. And I would say that we do not really have a, we do not really have a problem with autocorrelation. But remember that, that we do not have a problem with the residual autocorrelation. But remember that the value of Darwin-Watson is only important. The Darwin-Watson test is only relevant when you have time series data or panel data. This is not relevant at all for cross-sectional data, okay? And for normality of, of, the, of the residuals, as we have the normality on the residuals uh, kind of here, we can actually do a test to check for normality. So, so to check the normality of the residuals, I will, I, yeah, we have them saved. I will just go to uh, descriptive, then I'll go to explore, then I will just pick the, the residual of the real model, okay, estimated residuals. I'll go to plots and here you will see the normality plots with tests. So I will just continue and click OK. And here we have the data here. Yeah, the test of normality here. So here you can see we have significance higher than 0 0.05. So again here, uh, for both the test, the null hypothesis is that data is normal. Okay. And alternative is that data is not normal, okay? So when we have a p-value greater than 0 0.05, that means we fail to reject null. Fail to reject null. So in this case, you see that both those significant values are higher than 0 0.05. So that indicates that we fail to reject null. That means that our data is normally distributed, okay? 
and we can also see the plots here if you scroll down here we have the QQ plots okay here the idea is again saying that if all the dots falls in the line that means data is normally distributed which we can see is that actually kind of it falls on the line